Welcome to the first lecture of the Data Projects Udemy course on Exploratory Data Analysis (ADA). In this lecture, we will introduce the concept of ADA and explore the Google Play Store apps dataset using Python. Let's get started. The ADA is a crucial step in data analysis that helps us understand the data, discover patterns, and extract insights. It involves techniques to summarize, visualize, and explore the main characteristics of the data set. ADA helps in identifying data quality issues, outliers, missing values, and relationships between variables. ADA typically involves the following steps data collection which is about gathering the data set for analysis second step is data cleaning and processing handling missing values outliers and inconsistency the third step is data exploration by visualizing and summarizing the data set to gain insights the fourth step is statistical analysis by applying statistical measures and hypothesis testing. The fifth and final step is to draw conclusion or drawing conclusions by interpreting the findings and presenting them effectively. Python provides several powerful libraries for ADA including Bandas for data manipulation and analysis, NIMBY for numerical computations and array operations, Matplotlib for creating visualizations, Seaborn for advanced statistical visualizations. We will be working with the Google Play Store apps dataset, which contains information about various apps available on the Google Play Store. The dataset includes features like app name, category, rating, number of reviews, size, and price. Our goal is to explore the dataset and get insight into the distribution of app ratings, size, popularity, and price. Before we dive into the dataset, Make sure you have Python and the necessary libraries installed on your machine. You can install the required libraries using pip or conda package managers. Let's import the necessary libraries in our uh, Python script as the following. But you can also use Google Colab like me. In this course, we will use Google Colab, which is affordable and easy to use. Also, it comes with the required libraries for data analysis and machine learning. We will download our dataset, then upload it to the Google Colab as the following. Let's open the drop down and rename firstly the Google Colab tab by Google Play Store Analysis.ibymb. Then open our drop down and upload our dataset as the following. But you should extract the dataset, then upload the files inside the folder. It will appear in the collab as you will see. By choosing it from our system directory, it will appear in the drop down as the following now our files appear at the google collab directory as you can see now let's open a new code cell and import our important bison modules which is pandas as bd nimby as mb midbullet 
dot by plot as BLT, C porn as CNS. So this all the important images that we will use in our project Google Play Store Analysis. Now let's load the Google Play Store apps data set into the Pandas data frame. GF equal BD dot read underscore CSV between two parentheses and two single quotes or double quotes Google underscore play underscore store underscore apps dot CSV and we can copy the name of our CSV file from rename after clicking uh, right click on the CSV file and the directory of the collab and copy the name of the CSV and paste it inside the bd.readcsv method then run the first cell and the second cell then we will use the head method to return the first five rows from our dataset df underscore store and run our cell by clicking on the run icon it will run and then we will look at our uh, data set using dot head method of pandas data frame now we can do visual exploration for our data set so the first column is the app column the second column is the category column the third column is rating the fourth is reviews then size then stalls then types and price their content rating then generous then last updated then current version then android version then we will uh, use df underscore store dot info method to return the information or the summary information about uh, our data set as you see and run the cell using this method to see if we have any null values and what is the data type of uh, data inside our columns we find that the app column has no null values and of object data type category has no null values and of object data type rating is float 64 or numerical and has null values also we have type and price the type and content rating columns are of object data type and has one missing values or one null value also current version and android version has null values or missing missing data value now we will start to use another method called describe to return summary statistics of our data set so it will return the only summary statistics of the numerical column rating we will adjust that after cleaning our data set so in this lecture we introduce the concept of exploratory data analysis ADA and its importance in data projects we discuss the steps involved in ADA the Python libraries required for data analysis and the Google Play Store apps dataset that will be explored in the next lecture, we will focus on data cleaning and processing techniques. Thanks for joining this first lecture of Data Projects Udemy course on EDA. In the next lecture, we will dive deeper into data cleaning and processing. See you there. Happy coding!
Welcome back to the second lecture of the data projects Udemy course on exploratory data analysis. In this lecture, we will focus on uh, data cleaning and processing techniques using the Kaggle Google uh, Play Store apps dataset. Let's begin. Data cleaning and processing are essential steps in EDA to ensure the data set is reliable and ready for analysis. These steps involve handling missing value, dealing with duplicates, removing outliers, and ensuring data consistency. Missing data can affect the accuracy of our analysis. We need to identify and handle missing values appropriately. Common techniques for uh, handling missing data include dropping rows or columns with missing values, muting missing values using statistical measures like mean, median, or mood if we want to. A machine learning model from this data set after cleaning. Duplicate records can interfere our analysis. It's important to identify and handle duplicate entries. We can use the following bandes function to handle duplicates df.duplicated and dot duplicated dot sum to check the duplicated after cleaning. df dot drop duplicate or drop underscore duplicates remove duplicate rules from the data set. Removing outliers and handling inconsistent data. Outliers can significantly impact our analysis. We need to detect and handle outliers effectively. Techniques for outlier detection and handling include visualizing the distribution of data using box plots and scatter plots, calculating the scores or interquartile range IQR to identify outliers. Replacing outliers with a fixed value or applying transformations for the data. Data normalization and standardization. Data normalization and standardization are important for ensuring consistency. Normalization scales the data to a specific range from 0 to 1 while preserving the relative relationships. Standardization transforms the data to have zero means and unit variance, making it suitable for certain machine learning algorithms. Categorical variables need special treatment during data analysis. Techniques for handling categorical variables include one hot encoding creating dummy variables for each category. This will be done for machine learning. Label encoding converting categories into numerical labels. Ordinal encoding assigning numerical values based on the order or ranking. Let's apply the data cleaning and pre-processing techniques to the Google Play Store app dataset. Here an example of code snippet demonstrating some of the data cleaning and pre-processing techniques. Handling missing values df store dot drop na between two parentheses in place equal true. This will drop rows with missing values. Dealing with double case, df underscore store dot drop underscore duplicates, remove duplicates row. Then we will run the cell that contains the orders for cleaning our dataset and check our dataset after cleaning by using dot info method of uh, bandas data frame and we will find that our data set has no null values and also all the columns of our data set has the same 
number of rows 8714 rows or records then we will check the duplicates by using df underscore store dot duplicates dot sum it to return zero which means that we have no duplicates in our data set now we succeeded to clean our data from nulls and duplicates we will fix our data set columns data type by using dot string dot replace method and also as type method as you see now installs and reviews columns in our data set have the same correct data type which is end also we succeeded in removing the plus and comma symbols from installs column so in this lecture we discussed important techniques for data cleaning and reprocessing in ADA we covered the handling missing values dealing with duplicates removing outliers normalizing and standardization of data and handling categorical variables we also applied these techniques to the Google Play Store app dataset in the next lecture we will focus on data visualization techniques to gain insights from the dataset thank you for attending the second lecture of the data project Udemy course on EDA in the next lecture we will dive into data visualization techniques see you there and happy coding welcome to the third lecture of data project udemy course on exploratory data analysis ada in this lecture we will explore data visualization techniques using the kaggle google play store apps data set visualizations help us understand the data distribution and relationships let's get started data visualization plays a crucial role in ADA as it helps us understand patterns trends and relationships within the data set it allows us to communicate complex information in a visually appealing and accessible manner effective visualizations can lead to better insights and decision making there are various types of plots and charts we can use to visualize the data bar chart plots visualize categories or categorical data and compare different categories line plots display trends and changes over time scatter plots show the relationship between two numerical variables box plots summarize the distribution of a numerical variable and identify outliers histograms display the frequency distribution of a numerical variable heat maps represent the correlation between variables using colors pie charts illustrate the composition of categorical data as a proportion of a whole matplotlib and cpol are popular python libraries for data visualization matplotlib provides a wide range of customizable plots and charts seaborn builds upon matplotlib and offers additional statistical visualizations and scenes let's start by creating some basic visualization using matplotlib we can use function like plt.plot plt.scatter and plt.par to create different types of plots 
Customize the plots using methods like BLTX label, BLT.Y label, BLT.Title, BLT.XText. Seaborn simplifies the creation of complex visualization. It provides functions like SNS.CountPlot and sns.lineplot and dot box plot for various type of plots. Seabor also offers additional features like color palettes, statistical annotations, and grid layouts. Let's look at an example code snippet demonstrating data visualization techniques with matplotlib and cpor we will start by creating par plot so blt.figure between two parentheses figure size equal 10 and 0 cns.countplot data df store x category then we add PLT X label and the X text and Y label and title and we get the following figure or bar plot this code is creating a bar plot to visualize the distribution of app categories in Google Play Store dataset here is a step-by-step -step explanation the first line blt dot figure between two parentheses figure size equal 10 and 6 this line is setting up the figure for the plot the fig size parameter is used to specify the size of the figure in inches in this case 10 units wide and 6 units in tall the second line of this code SNS dot count plot between two parentheses data equal df underscore store and x equal category this line is creating a count plot a type of bar plot using the C porn library aliased as SNS the data parameter is set to df underscore store which is the data frame containing the Google play store data the x parameter is set to category which means the categories of apps will be plotted on the x axis the third line of code blt dot x label between two parentheses category and two single quotes this line is setting the label for the x axis to category the fourth line of code blt.xtx between two parentheses rotation equal 90. This line is rotating the x axis label, the app categories, by 90 degrees. This is often done where there are many labels and they would overlap if left in their default horizontal position. The fifth line of code blt dot y label between two parentheses and two single quotes count this line is setting the label for the y axis to count this represents the number of apps in each category the final line of code blt dot title between two parentheses and two single quotes distribution of app categories this line is setting the title of the plot to distribution of app categories the resulting plot shows how many apps belong to each category in the google play store dataset providing insights into which categories are most common the bar chart we created represents the distribution of app categories in a dataset the x-axis represents the different categories of apps. The y-axis represents the count of apps in each category. From the chart, we can see that the tools 
category has the highest count with over 1600 apps indicating that it's the most common category in this data set on the other hand categories like art and design auto and vehicles and beauty have significantly fewer apps this kind of chart is useful for understanding the distribution of categorical data in this case it provides insights into which types of apps are most common in the google play store this information could be useful for app developers when deciding what type of app to create next this could is creating a scatterplot to visualize the relationship between the number of reviews and the rating of apps in the Google Play Store dataset. Here is a step-by-step -step explanation. The first line of code is plt dot figure between two parentheses, fixed size equal 10 and 6. This line is setting up the figure for the plot. The second line s and s dot uh, scatter plot between two parentheses data equal df underscore store and uh, comma x equal reviews between two single quotes comma y equal rating between two single quotes close the parentheses uh, this uh, line is creating a scatter plot using the seaborn library analyzed as s and s the data parameter is set to df underscore store, which is the data frame containing the Google Play Store data. The x parameter is set to reviews between two parentheses reviews, which means the number of reviews will be plotted on the x axis. And the y parameter is set to rating, uh, which means the app ratings will be plotted on the y axis the third line blt dot x label number of reviews between two parentheses and two single quotes this line is setting the label for the x axis to the number of reviews blt dot y label between two parentheses and two single quotes rating this line is setting the label for the y-axis to rating the fifth and final uh, line of code plt dot title between two parentheses and two single quotes relationship between reviews and rating this line is setting the title of the plot to relationship between reviews and rating the resulting plot shows how app ratings relate to the number of reviews they have received each point of the plot represents an app with its position determined by its number of reviews x coordinate and its rating y coordinate this code is creating a box plot to visualize the distribution of app installs across different categories in the Google Play Store dataset. Here is a step-by-step -step explanation. The first line of code plt dot figure. As we said before, the line is setting up the figure for the plot. SNS dot uh, box plot between two parentheses data equal df underscore store comma x equal between two single quotes category comma y equal between two single quotes installs close parentheses this line is creating a box plot using the seaborn library analyzed as sns the data parameter is set to df underscore store which is the data frame containing the Google Play Store data. The X parameter is set to category, which means that the categories of apps will be plotted on the X axis and the Y parameter is set to installs 
which means the number of installs will be plotted on the y axis then bl2 uh, dot uh, x label and x text and also blt dot uh, y label and blt dot title the same as we explained before the resulting plot shows how app installs are distributed within each category each box in the plot represents a category and shows the range from minimum to maximum and medium the median is the line inside the box and the potential outliers which are the points beyond the whiskers of installs for apps within the category so let's recap and summarize in this lecture we explore data visualization techniques in ADA using the Kaggle Google Play Store apps dataset we discussed also the importance of data visualization and different types of plots and charts also we learned about uh, Midplotlib and Seaborn as powerful Python library for creating visualization. Finally, we also uh, saw the, an example code in Snippet demonstrating the usage of Midplotlib and Seaborn for data visualization. This brings us to the end. Thank you for attending this uh, third lecture of the data projects. Udemy course on EDA. In the next lecture, we will dive into statistical analysis and hypothesis testing. See you there and happy coding! Welcome to the fourth lecture of uh, this uh, course on exploratory data analysis EDA. In this lecture, we will dive into statistical analysis and hypothesis testing using the Kaggle Google Play Store apps dataset. Statistical analysis allows us to make data-driven decisions and draw meaningful conclusions. Let's begin. Statistical analysis helps us uncover patterns, relationships, and insights from data. It involves applying statistical techniques to analyze and interpret the data set. Statistical analysis provides a solid foundation for making data-driven decisions. Descriptive statistics summarize and describe the main features of the data set. Common descriptive statistics include measures of central tendency, mean medium mood and measures of variability standard deviation and range we can use bandits and nearby libraries to calculate descriptive statistics correlation measures the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two numerical variables covariance measures the relationship between two variables taking into account both the magnitude and the direction we can use function like df.curve and mb.curve to calculate the relation and covariance respectively hypothesis testing allows us to make an inference and draw calculation about a population based on a sample. It involves formulating a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis and then uh, performing statistical tests. Common statistical tests include t-test, chi-square tests and ANOVA tests. Let's go through hypothesis testing using the Google Play Store apps that I said. Hypothesis. Hypothesis. There is a significant difference in the average rating between free and paid apps. 
we can perform a t-test to compare the means of the two groups and determine if the difference is statistically significant here is the following code snippet demonstrating hypothesis testing using the t-test from ccpy.stats import t-test underscore end then after importing the important module and its methods and classes we will split the data set into free and paid apps free apps equal df underscore store between two square brackets df underscore store again and inside two square brackets type column equal free and they're both inside a single quotes and then we will do the same for the paid apps so paid underscore apps equal df underscore store between two square brackets d underscore store and between two other square brackets type equal paid between two single quotes the both now we can perform the t test so t underscore state comma p underscore value equal t test underscore end between two parentheses free apps rating and paid apps rating and run our cell then we can return the b value and test if this b value is less than 0.05 which is the acceptable error so the print will print rejected null hypothesis there is no significant difference in rating else it will print fail to reject null hypothesis there is no significant difference in rating after running the cell it reject null hypothesis there is no significant difference in rating and as we said before we can print the b value by typing b underscore value and run the cell it will return the b value which is less than 0.05 value of the error so in this lecture we explored statistical analysis and the hypothesis testing using the Kaggle Google Play Store apps dataset descriptive statistics help us Summarize the dataset while correlation and covariance explore relationships between variables. Hypothesis testing allows us to draw conclusion and make inference based on statistical tests. We also saw an example code snippet demonstrating hypothesis testing using the T test. Thank you for attending the fourth lecture of this course. In the next lecture, we will focus on data storytelling and presentation techniques. See you there and happy coding! Welcome to the fifth lecture of this project, Google Apps Dataset. We will explore data storytelling and presentation techniques using the Kaggle Google Play Store dataset. Effective storytelling can help us communicate insights and findings to a wider audience. Let's get started. Data storytelling is the art of communicating insights and findings in a compelling and engaging manner. It helps us make the data more readable and understandable to a diverse audience. Effective data storytelling can drive decision making and create impact. 
Data storytelling involves several key elements, clear objects, which define the purpose of and goal of your story. Engaging narrative, which craft a compelling narrative that captivates the audience. Visual appeal, which use visual appealing and informative charts, graphs, and informal graphics. And the final is insight and takeaways. Highlights the key insights and actionable takeaways from the data. Structuring your data story helps ensure a logical flow and coherence. A common structure includes introduction, set the stage by introducing the data set and its significance. Data overview provide an overview of the data set, its variable and statistics. Exploratory analysis present interesting findings, patterns, and relationships. Insights and conclusions summarize the main insights and draw conclusions. Recommendations provide actionable recommendations based on the insights. Visualization play a crucial role in data storytelling. Choose appropriate visualizations that effectively convey the intended message. Use color, size, and formatting to enhance the visual appealing and highlight important information. Incorporate storytelling elements into your visualization such as annotations and titles. Let's look at an example of data storytelling using the Google Play Store app's dataset. Objective explore the relationship between app ratings and the number of installations. Narrative is highlighting the impact of app ratings on user engagement and success. Visualizations create scatter plot and line plot to showcase the relationship. Insights and takeaways emphasize the importance of maintaining high quality ratings for app success here is an example of code snippet demonstrating data storytelling with visualization scatter blot as you see here is the data storytelling using charts as the following the scatter blot relationship between ratings and installs the scatter plot visualizes the relationship between the ratings and the number of installs for different app categories. Each point represents an app where the x axis represents the rating and the y axis represents the number of installs. The color hue represents different app categories. The chart helps us understand if there is any correlation between ratings and the popularity of apps based on the number of installs the second plot is line plot average rating trend over time this line plot shows the trend of the average rating of apps over time the x-axis represents the timeline of the last updated date of the apps and the y axis represents the average rating. The chart helps us identify how the average rating of apps has changed over time, providing insights into the quality and user satisfaction of apps. But as you have noticed that the line plot we have created is not clear, so we will use another metric instead of year we will use months by using the following code snippet firstly we will convert the last updated to date time instead of object 
then set the last updated as the index of our data set then reassemble rating to monthly frequency and after we run the set now we can create our line plot again using monthly frequency for rating the third and the final chart for storytelling of our data set is a line plot for average rating trend over time but monthly not yearly this line plot focuses on the average rating trend over time at a monthly frequency the x-axis represents the date of the last updated of the apps grouped by months and the y-axis represents the average rating the chart allows us to observe the average rating fluctuation over time on a monthly basis providing a more granular view of rating trends this chart provides a valuable insight into the relationship between ratings and installed, the overall trend of average rating over time, and how the average rating changes on a monthly basis. They help analyze and understand the dynamics of Google Play Store apps data set. So in this uh, lecture, we explore data storytelling and implementation techniques using the Kaggle Google Play Store apps dataset. We discussed also the importance of data storytelling and the key elements involved. Structuring your data story helps maintain coherence and engage the audience. Visualizations play a vital role in conveying insights effectively. We also saw an example code snippet demonstrating data storytelling with visualization. Thank you for attending the fifth lecture of this uh, project. In the next and final lecture, we will discuss the final conclusion of this project. See you there and happy coding. Welcome back to the final lecture of uh, this project on uh, exploratory data analysis. ADA. In this lecture, we will conclude our journey with the Kaggle Google Play Store apps dataset and discuss best practices for documentation and sharing your ADA project. Let's wrap up our uh, learning experience. We started our ADA journey with the Kaggle Google Play Store app dataset which contains information about various apps on the Google Play Store. Throughout the course we explored the dataset performing data cleaning and processing contacted exploratory analysis visualized the data and performed statistical analysis and hypothesis testing. Documentation is essential for maintaining the integrity and the reproducibility of your ADA project. It allows others to understand your project, repl replicate your analysis, and build upon your work. Documenting your project also helps you uh, keep track of your own analysis, process, and findings. Effective documentation should include uh, the following elements. Introduction provide an overview of the dataset and the project objectives. Data description describes the variables, their meanings, and any data transformation applied. Data cleaning and processing outline the steps taken to clean the processing of the data. Exploratory data analysis summarize the mean findings patterns and relationships discovered visualizations include the visualization created to support your analysis statistical analysis document the statistical tests performed and the results obtained conclusion and in 
insights, summarize the main insights and conclusion draw from the analysis. References you should add every reference you used inside your data processing and cleaning and analysis during the project. Sharing your project ETA allows you to showcase your work and contribute to the data community. Consider the following platforms for sharing your project. Kaggle, publish your ETA notebook on Kaggle for others to access and learn from. GitHub, create a repository on GitHub to share your code, documentation, and visualization. Blogging, write a blog post summarizing your ADA project and share it on platforms like Medium on your personal blog. Social media, share snippets and insights from your project on social media platforms to engage with the data community. Follow these best practices to ensure effective documentation of your ADA project. Use Markdown. Utilize Markdown language to format and structure your documentation. Code comments. Add comments in your code to explain the steps and logic behind your analysis. Clear and concise writing. Write in a clear, concise, and organized manner to aid understanding and facilitate it. Include visualizations. Incorporate uh, visualization to support your analysis and enhance comprehension. Reproducibility. Provide instructions and dimensions to ensure others can reproduce your analysis. Congratulations on completing the data project or the first project of this course. Throughout this course, we explored the Kaggle, Google Play Store apps dataset through the first project, performed data analysis, visualization, st statistical analysis, and the hypothesis testing. We discussed the importance of documentation and sharing your ADA project with the data community by following best practices for documentation you can ensure the integrity and the reproducibility of your work remember ADA is a powerful tool for extracting insights and making data driven decisions thank you for joining the first project regarding Google data analysis for apps at Google Play Store using ADA. We hope you gained valuable knowledge and skills in exploratory data analysis. Keep exploring and analyzing data to uncover meaningful insights. Good luck on your future data project and happy coding!